Good evening. Please just give me a minute. I want to check that this is working okay. We are going to be doing everything on the floor, so if you want to just get comfortable and I'm going to give you a quick introduction, I will be back in one second. Wonderful, I can see myself and I can see that there are people are starting to arrive. So as I said, if you want to get uh, into a seated position, just why so I'll uh, give a quick introduction to what we're going to do today. So this uh, yoga session came about from um, a couple of weeks ago when I was in a uh, tunnel tent on top of a mountain and I thought what happens if uh, it starts pissing it down with rain and I'm stuck in here for hours um, not able to move um, hence today's theme uh, yoga for small spaces so this class can therefore be done um, in a small space such as a tent or a small room or a coffin or whatever it is that you are inside and because it is all done either lying down or sitting up then it actually also can be done um, in a bed which is always good either in the morning or the evening or lunchtime whatever so yin yang yoga for small spaces Anyone who hasn't done uh, one of these classes with me before, Yin Yang Yoga brings together two different approaches to yoga. The Yin, which is slow, uh, still in fact, passive, and we are focusing on the deep connected tissue and the energy flow, the Qi or Prana flow of the body. And the Yang, which is moving, active, uh, and is focused on the, uh, the muscle of the body. Please let me know who's there. Um, something else, as you can see, I'm not really particularly uh, dressed, for, dressed for yoga today. So actually uh, this, this session, um, yeah, you can, you can wear whatever you want as well. I teach, um, again, for anybody who hasn't been before, I teach in a way that is very much focused on what you're feeling in the body, not what it looks like to the outside world. So um, please pay attention to what you're feeling, where you're feeling it, and use me as a general guide. Don't try to look exactly like me. Do pay attention um, to the feelings in the body, and by that I also mean anything that doesn't feel right, um, adjust the pose using any suggestions I've made or just come out completely. If something is hurting you, come out. Really important. This class is suitable for beginners uh, and those who have been doing yoga for some time. Um, please, uh, you may want to use this as maybe a bit more of a gentle practice um, or adjust it so that it suits you. So that's everything that I want to say. Hello, Linda. Um, yeah, and please say hello. That would be really nice. And we're going to start the class by lying down. So what we've got for props, you might have seen my post, are uh, just anything really, because obviously if you're in a tent, you wouldn't have very much. So I've just got some pillows here and I've got a scarf. And um, so by the way, we will need something. It's not yeah, if you've got a scarf or a strap around, then that would be great. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin by just flexing and extending the toes. So we're just pointing the toes away from us and then towards us. And I want you to notice how this isn't just stretching the foot and the ankle, but also you may be able to feel this in the legs as well, the muscles in the legs. And then we're gonna circle. So try to just circle the ankles. Try not to move the legs too much, doesn't matter which way you're circling. 
we're going to go the other way anyway and then circling the opposite direction I can see a few more people there let me know who's there <laughs> okay then we're going to go to the knees so bend the knee place the foot on the floor and now try not to move the top of the leg so we're going to straighten the leg bend straighten bend and then just keep doing that paying attention to what happens when you straighten the leg when you extend the knee where can you feel this in the back of the leg perhaps you can even feel it in the front of the leg as well and then holding on to the top of the leg i also want you to see how much don't overdo it don't push at all but circle the lower part of the leg so there is a little movement here I'm going the other way as well, but not very much. It's not like the hip. It's a different kind of joint in the knee. Okay, and then what we're going to do is the same with the hip. So bring the knee in and we're going to rotate. So just moving that leg around in the hip joint. Again, noticing where you feel this in the leg, which part. And my leg is um, clicking, so you need to be careful with that because that could well be the bone pressing up against something. I don't want to be wearing it away. <laughs> Make it as big or as small as you want. Yeah, and then bring the knee in. Now this is where if you've got a scarf or whatever, you can use this. If you don't, you can do it without the scarf. It just gives it a bit more extra stretch basically. So if you've got a star scarf or a strap, put it on the foot and straighten the leg. Now it doesn't need to be completely straight. I just want you to go to the point where you are feeling starting to feel a stretch on the back this is going to be different for different people some people and you can of course lengthen the scarf if you need to some people will be here some people will have this leg much closer to them go to the point that is your natural stopping point and then as this is yang yoga we are going to be activating the muscles so do it with the breath as you breathe out then just gently Pull that leg slightly towards you. It doesn't need to be that much at all, just a little bit. So you're feeling a bit more stretch in the muscles in the back. Breathe in. In your own time, breathe out gently, bringing it towards you. Using this strap or this scarf to help you. And if you want even more stretch, push the heel up and the toes coming towards you. If you want less, you can put the toes up. So this is flexing the leg. So we're also going to bring it down. We're going to adduct. So just take hold of the strap or the scarf in the left hand and slowly bring that leg over to the side. Okay, go to the point where you're feeling a stretch on the outer right hip, the glutes area. You can play with this, it doesn't need to be still. Yeah, you can move up and down a bit, but go to the point where you're feeling that stretch and it feels good. Remember to use my body as a general guide. Maybe your foot is down completely, or maybe it's up in the air. Play with it, find where that stretch is in the glutes, and then bring the leg back up. Yeah, and as I said, you don't need to have a scarf or whatever to do this. And then we're gonna go abducting. So we're going to bring that right leg out to the right. Maybe you're bringing the foot down completely. Maybe you're keeping it up in the air. Play with this. Move it to the position where you're feeling a stretch on the inside 
thigh. And then stay. And as it's yang, as you breathe out, then you can just maybe pull the strap a little bit more to feel the stretch on the inside thigh. Maybe moving the foot up a bit may be helpful. Moving it down if you want less. On the next in breath, bring it up. And then take the strap off. Straighten the leg. We've lost somebody. <laughs> and then let's do the other side. Bend the left knee. Keeping this, uh, keeping this thigh still, relatively still. Straighten and bend the knee. This is not about the whole leg, this is about the knee. Noticing where you're feeling it in the back of the leg. Maybe the sides of the leg. Noticing where you're feeling it. Okay. And then again, rotating that limited rotation. It's different for everybody. Everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but most people have it to a degree but some people may have more of this movement in the knee than others. I don't have it very much, for example. Try not to move that thigh. Okay, and then we're going to do that rotation in the hip joint. Yeah, use me, remember, as a general guide. You can hold on to the leg or not. Just notice how much you can rotate. How much rotation do you have here? Some may have a little, some may have a lot. And if you're hearing a click like me, this could be, yeah, you might need to adjust how much rotation you're doing here. Okay. So then again, we're gonna stretch out this leg. So we have the scarf or whatever it is you're using and just put it on the foot and stretching the leg up. On each out breath, bringing it a little bit closer to you. So you're going to your natural stopping point and then you're bringing it a little bit closer each time, moving the leg and also moving it closer to you using the scarf. Toes towards you if you want more stretch in the back of the leg, pointing the toes more if you want less. And the same, bringing the foot leg down if you want less, bringing it closer to you if you want more. Taking hold of the scarf in the right hand, and we're gonna bring the foot down to the point, your natural stopping point, to slowly go down. It is, there is weight, obviously, in the leg. To the right, to the point where you're feeling that stretch in the glute, in the top of the leg. And again, as you breathe out, you can just, you can move the leg up and down a bit. You can move it sideways. Notice how that stretch might change a little bit. And then you can stay still if you want, or keep moving. Next in breath, bring it up. Switch to the left hand, put the right hand out to the side if you want, and then bring it down to the point where you're feeling that stretch on the inside thigh. Play with it again, moving the leg up and down, sideways, playing with it. You want to feel the stretch on the inside thigh. And then bringing that leg up, bending it, Bringing it down, noticing how the legs feel here. And then we're going to come up. So just bend the knees. You can cross the ankles and just a couple of times you can just rock. Do it a few times just to massage the lower spine. And then we're coming back up to the centre. So now we're going to move on to our hands and knees and I would like to do a flow but a seated 
flow with a particular emphasis on the spine and the shoulders. We've done the legs and the arms actually as well. So I'll just show you slowly first, we'll practice slowly so you can feel it in the body and then we will move into a flow. So to start with, as we would do with a standing vinyasa, let's bring the palms together in front of the heart. And as we breathe in, we're going to stretch out, we're going to go up onto the knees. So we're going to feel this first. So really stretch up. Push into the floor with the knees so the legs are strong and then go back to the point where you're starting to feel a back bend, but it's okay. If it's feeling too much, straighten up. Yeah, don't go too far back. Feeling that in the arms, in the back. And then we're going to come down into a child's pose. So I want you to make this really stretching the arms out so you can feel it in the arms and then you may also feel it in the pull in the shoulders if you've got any compression in the groin you can always separate the knees so really feel this really stretch out stretching the arms stretching the backs of the shoulders on the next in breath i want you to go up to all fours and then we're just going to have a cat, maybe this is cow, sometimes I can't remember which one it is. But we're going to bring the arch into the spine, you can move the hips a bit, you're looking up, pushing into the floor, bringing the shoulder blades together, we've got time here just to feel the pose. And then if you want to feel more of a stretch on the throat, close the mouth or even bring the bottom lip over. And then on the next out breath, we're going to curve the spine and we're going to go back into that child's pose. Breathing in, we're coming up, kneeling, but not up on the knees, just kneeling. And we're bringing the arms out to the sides. We're opening up the chest. So the arms are going back and the elbows are somewhat bent to whatever degree you want. It doesn't matter as long as you're opening up the chest. The head is going back. So this is also a back bend, but particularly with an emphasis on opening the chest. Then as you breathe out, we're gonna come forward. We're gonna stretch the hands forward. We're gonna curve the spine. So really feel this is opposite to what we just did, pushing out the arms, feeling that curve in the spine. You can bring the body back like I have if you like. And then just stretching up. And I'm going to show you this this way. No, I'm not. I'm going to show you this this way. And then we're going to come down again child's pose. As we breathe in, bend the elbows and then coming forward, we're moving into a cobra or an up dog. You choose the elbows. We can move a bit here. You can separate the legs a bit if it's feeling a bit of a pinching in the lower back and then just twist a few times to the left and the right. Twist a few times, then bring the head down, push into the hands, curving the spine, and then pushing the hips back once more into child pose. Breathe in, come up, just kneeling. This is where I showed you sideways. Drop to the left. Okay, so the left hand goes on the floor, the right hand goes ahead. Stretch out to the left so you can feel a stretch on the side of the body. Really stretch. And then on the next in breath, bring this top arm back. You can bend the elbow again, but we're opening up the chest. You can push into the left hand, 
to raise yourself up. Right arm goes back. If you're feeling a pinching in the arm, rotate the arm or move the arm to a different place. It doesn't matter where it is as long as it's opening up the chest. Pushing into the left hand, your knee can come up, that's fine. And then bring it back for that side stretch. And we'll do it to the other side, so stretch up. Drop the right hand down, stretch out to the left. Stretching, feeling that stretch on the left side of the body. Next, in breath, take the arm back. Opening up the chest, pushing into this right hand, move the position of the hand if you want. Move the position of the arm if there's a pinching in the shoulder. Opening up, knees staying on the floor or coming up. Out breath, stretching back down to the right. In breath, stretching up. And then the palms are down together in front of the heart. So you felt all those movements. You know what the target areas are. We're going to bring it into a flow. So back onto your knees and we will do it with the breath. It's going to be like a slow flow. So palms in front of the heart. It might be in a slightly different order, but it's still the same poses. Close your eyes, just come to your breath. So breathe in, come up onto the knees. Breathe out, down to child's pose. Breathe in, go to cat. Breathe out, down to child's pose. Breathe in, bend the elbows, come forward. Breathe out, into cobra. Breathe in, looking over the shoulder. Breathe out, over the other shoulder. Breathe in, tuck the head, push in the hands. Breathe out, coming back to child's pose. Breathe in, arms to the sides. Breathe out, arms forward, curving the spine. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, stretch to the left. Breathe in, open to the back. Breathe out, stretch to the left. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop to the right. Breathe in, open up to the back. Breathe out, stretch to the right. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, palms in front of the heart. Let's do it again. Breathe in, stretch up, come up on the knees. Breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, come to cat or cow. Breathe out, curve the spine back into child's pose. Breathe in, coming forward into cobra. Breathe out into cobra, move the hands if you need to. Breathe in, looking over one shoulder. Breathe out, looking over the other shoulder. Breathe in, drop the head down, push back. Breathe out, continuing to come down to child's pose. Breathe in, open the arms out wide. Breathe out, curve arms forward. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop to the left. Breathe in, go back. Breathe out, drop to the left. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop to the right. Breathe in. Stretch back, breathe out, drop to the right. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, palms together in front of the heart. One more time, breathe in, stretch up, up on the knees. Breathe out, curve forward. Breathe in, can't remember, stretch up. Breathe out, <laughs> come forward, sorry. Breathe in, come to cat. Breathe out, down into child's pose. Breathe in, come forward into cobra. Breathe out, moving up into cobra. Breathe in, looking over one shoulder. 
Breathe out, looking over the other. Breathe in, tuck the head, pushing into the hands. Breathe out, coming back into child's pose again. Breathe in, arms out to the sides, open the chest. Breathe out, stretch the arms forward, curve the spine. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop to the left. Breathe in, open up to the back. Breathe out, drop to the left. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, drop to the other side. Breathe in, go back. Breathe out, drop to the side. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out, palms together in front of the heart. So you can, of course, do that as many times as you like. If you like that, then it will be in the videos. But what we're going to do now is we are going to move into the yin yoga section. I perhaps should have done that yang bit facing you. Apologies. So we're going to start with saddle pose. So again, on your knees. Maybe you've got props, maybe you haven't. So we'll start, let's start with the knees a little bit open and then we're going to go backwards. So I want you to go to the point that suits you. Our target area is the front. We're opening up the front. So with these yin poses, we're back to the legs again but also we are working the torso and the spine with that. So go to the point where you are feeling, your natural stopping point, where you're feeling a stretch on the legs and everything's okay with the back, basically. So it may be on the hands, fingers can be pointing any direction. You might even wanna put something underneath the hands, blocks, for example, or anything, cushions. Or it may be for you, elbows. Yeah, as you can see, my knees naturally have separated here. That's absolutely fine. They don't need to be close together. And they've also come up. By the way, uh, for most people, you will be sitting on your heels here. But for some people, it might suit you better to sit between the heels. Or it may be that for you, going back down on your back is most suitable for a stretch in the front of the thighs that isn't too much or too little. But do not go any further than your natural stopping point, whatever that is for you. Don't go down on your back just because I did it. If you have props, for example, a bolster that you would like to put underneath your back on the length of your back, please do that. And as you can see, you can use pillows, cushions, whatever, underneath your hands or underneath your elbows to relax into this pose. We're gonna stay here now for around two and a half minutes. So just find your pose and it may be different from day to day. So for example, for me today, this is feeling good down on my back, but usually it doesn't. Usually this is too much on my lower back. If this is not feeling good in your knees, then either come to a lesser edge up on your elbows or your hands or a variation. If that's still not working for you, then you might want to try uh, for a minute or so each, you might want to try a one-legged version. So keeping the right leg where it is, left foot you can put on the floor, sitting inside the right foot and then going back that way. That may be better on the knees, maybe, maybe not. So if you've done that, I will tell you when a minute is up and then you can change to the other side.
With yin yoga, always go to your natural stopping point. Allow yourself to relax into the pose. And if you feel at any point that it's not working for you, then adjust the pose or come out completely. Check into your body. Anything is pinching, stabbing, tingling. If it doesn't feel right, it isn't right. So come out. Don't make your body do things that is going to hurt it. So anybody who was doing the one-legged version, you can now switch to the other side. If you're doing the two-legged, just stay there for a bit longer. So for the one-legged, you can come up. This time the left knee is bent, place the right foot on the floor. And you probably will need to sit on the inside of the left leg and then go backwards. Now if there's too much of a stretch on the front of the ankle, it doesn't need to be going back like that. You can actually bring, as long as it's okay on the knee again, it's not, it's not working for me, but you can bring the foot out. Be gentle with any movements that you're making. That wasn't working for me in my hip at all there. So I've gone back to this, but that's my body. Two-legged, if you're in the two-legged, then I want you just to come back up to a kneeling position gently, gingerly, and before we move into anything else, then just stay kneeling, or you can put the legs out straight if you like. Put the hands wherever is comfortable, wherever is neutral for you. Either on the floor behind you, or you can gently fold over if you want. Gentle fold. Close your eyes. Just notice how that feels on the fronts of the legs. If you are in half saddle, then just give it maybe three more breaths, don't rush. And then you can also come up to a seated position, legs out straight or kneeling. Folded, gently folded or hands on the floor, you choose whatever is neutral. And we'll just be here for another 30 seconds or so. For those of you who've already been sitting in this rebound, if you want to just move the legs, if you just want to shake the legs, just to bring a bit, a bit of a counter pose in, a bit of a yang counter pose, then please do that. And then we're going to move into the next pose for everybody, which is called half shoelace. So the idea here, our target area, is the back of the straight leg. So I'm going to show you this way. I'm aware you can't see my feet, but that doesn't really matter. So for those of you who already know shoelace, so we're going to bend the right knee. We're going to bring the right foot over the knee and we're going to bring it without pulling on the knee towards the left hip. Now for me, I can stack, uh, it's okay with me to, to kind of have my knees stacked because of the way my, my hips are, but others, many others in fact, may well have their knee up. Some people may have their foot much further forward, some people may have it much further back. Just because I look like this does not mean that you will necessarily look like this. If you're finding that it's not good on the knee, then something that you might want to do is sit up on something. So for example, these blankets that I've got here, which tilts you forward. And if you wanted to put something in between the knees, if you feel that that would be helpful, then please do that as well. 
Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to fold forward. We want to feel a stretch on the back of the outside, uh, back of the straight leg. So for me, in this pose, I really don't have to go far at all for me to feel a stretch. For others, they may have to go really far. Different, different people. Some people may not actually be feeling it very much. So if that's the case, you might want to try moving the position of the body and seeing if that gives you a stretch to the back of the leg. If that's still not working, perhaps change the position of this top leg. Perhaps maybe it might work better for you if you bring the ankle on the knee. You can hold on to the foot if you want to, that's fine. And it's okay if you bring maybe a little bit of yang, a little, little bit, pulling yourself slightly, but then relax into it if that gives you the stretch. And we're going to stay here for two minutes in your variation of the pose. Close your eyes. Bring your attention to the back of the leg. Bring your attention to the stretch on the back of the straight leg. Keep the body soft, keep the muscles relaxed so that we can get past the muscles into the deep connective tissue. The more we relax the muscles, the more we're going to access. Otherwise, the stress goes to the muscles more. And we did those already in the yang. So just three more breaths. And on the third breath, we're going to come up and we're going to move directly into a pose where we're stretching the inside of the straight leg. So we bring the right foot into the left thigh or somewhere near and then we take the left leg out you may be starting to feel a stretch already maybe maybe not so go to your natural stopping point don't worry too much if you're not feeling a stretch yet and then we're going to fold forward so start by folding somewhere down the middle and then notice, are you feeling the stretch on the inside thigh? You don't need to fold over completely. You just fold over to the point where you're feeling that stretch there. If it's too much, if it's pulling on the attachments of that straight leg, by the way, then by all means, bend it a bit. You're always welcome to do that in anything that's straight legs, perhaps even putting a rolled up blanket underneath if you want to. If you aren't really feeling much stretch, play with the position of the torso, move it around. Maybe this is better for you actually if you fold down the leg. Find where it is and then we'll stay for two minutes.
Soften those muscles. Relax into the pose. Notice if you've tensed anything, if anything's become tight without you even realizing it. And see if you can release, sending your breath there, relaxing the muscles again. Time is ticking, everybody, I realize. So just to let you know, I'm going to be going over another, it's probably going to be about five minutes over, just to let you know that. Please stay if you can, because we want to do the other side. So we're going to come up. Yep, yeah, two minutes is up, so we're going to come up. And then we're going to go directly to the other side. So just take hold of that leg, bring it in, and, and the counter pose is actually the other side. So this leg is going to get a bit of a rest. So this time we're going to straighten out the front, uh, the right leg. Sitting up on something again if you want to. Bending the right knee, bringing the left, sorry, the left knee, bringing the left foot over. And we're putting this foot kind of on the side, if that's comfortable, on the side of the foot and taking it around towards the outer hip to the point that is okay without pulling on the knee. If the knee is uncomfortable, put something underneath it and or sit up on something so you're tilted forward more. Fold forward over this leg. Notice if you have stretch in the back of the leg. If you do, then everything else seems to be okay, then stay here. Otherwise, if it's not really working again, play with the position of the torso. If you're not really feeling the stretch, see if that helps. And if that doesn't help, you can try moving the position of the foot, maybe placing the ankle above the knee or even actually bringing the foot into the thigh but keeping this right leg straight, maybe that gives you more stretch in the back of the leg. And then we'll stay here for just over two minutes. Don't worry if you don't fold very far, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Is what it feels like. If it gets too much at any point, then come up. If you feel like you've lost at any point, then just adjust the pose a bit, move the hips, maybe take hold of the foot, gentle pull and then relax. Gentle, gentle, gentle.
Have you tensed anything? Are you as soft as you can be? Adjust. Constantly small micro movements adjusting. So the two minutes is up. So on the next in-breath, we're going to be coming up, moving directly into the next pose. So bringing this top leg up and into the thigh, taking the right leg out to the side, to the point where you're starting to feel a stretch as far or as not far as you need to. <laughs> And then find the point where it is for you, where you're intensifying that stretch to a point that's not too much or too little. And you can stay in for around two minutes and a quarter now. Maybe down the middle, maybe more to the side. Maybe more down the other leg. Play with the position of that torso, adjust the position of the leg if you need to. And you can always adjust the position of the left leg as well, the left foot. It doesn't actually really matter where it is. That leg is not important here. Just under two minutes. Once you've found your position, release. So three more breaths here, deep breaths, deep but natural. And after the third breath, then I want you to slowly come up, pushing into the hands, bringing yourself up, taking hold of this right leg, bending the knee, bringing it in. Placing the foot on the floor, just noticing how that feels. And then we're going to move into Shavasana. So gently, as always gently, a word I probably use too much. <laughs> Make your way into your Shavasana, be that lying down or sitting. Maybe even moving into a meditation if that's something that you like to do. Always a good time after doing yoga. That's actually what it was for originally, the asanas. So getting comfortable. Adjusting the body as you need to. Closing your eyes, blanket on if you need to. And I'm going to leave you here today. So please 
please just give yourself a couple of minutes at least at least two or three minutes here ideally longer and just really allow yourself to sink into the floor feel the connection to the floor and don't rush up please don't rush up stay here for a while and if you enjoyed the yin yoga part of this session and would like to do more and for longer this Thursday I'll be holding an online yin yoga for peace of mind which is very much about the connection between mindfulness and yin yoga should be a really lovely class if you want to join you can find it on the events page if not, thank you for coming today. Enjoy your Shavasana. Take your time. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you.